Just outside of Vancouver lies the important agricultural community of Delta. Surrounded by water on three sides, the Fraser River to the north and the Pacific Ocean to the south and west, this resilient city intersects both world global themes of coastal communities and the water energy food nexus. As the first stop on our virtual field tour, I'm headed to Boundary Bay Dyke Trail to meet up with Megan, my colleague from Waterlution and Will Global Coordinator. Megan has close ties to this region, so she's going to give me the locals tour of what's happening in the world of water innovation here and introduce me to some of the key players that are helping to solve these complex issues. Oh, how long have you lived here in Delta? Well, my mom is from Delta, my papa lives up in North Delta, and so we would come here a lot as a child and just hang out in their yard, give a huge garden, um, and they produce a lot of food. Wow, it seems to be the thing here. <laughs> yeah, there's so much farming out here in Delta. They grow blueberries, cranberries, potatoes. It's a huge agricultural producer for BC, and they face a lot of challenges. As you can see, we're right on the coastline, and Delta is surrounded by water on three sides, the Fraser Rivers to the north, we've got the Pacific Ocean, Boundary Bay right here. And being a coastal community, they're really facing a lot of challenges with floodwaters coming in, erosion, sea level rise. So I had to do a lot of different adaptations, innovations within the city, and I'm excited to show you them all today. We can start with the John L. Oliver Pump Station. Let's do it. The John Oliver Pump Station sits on the shore of Boundary Bay and manages the exit water flow for all of East Delta. Ted van der Gulik has a long history of working with Delta farmers on irrigation and drainage in Delta, and he's met us here to tell us more. So this pump station is an integral piece of the water management, flood management for Delta. Probably some of the best farmland we have in Canada because it is low-lying. It's part of the Fraser Delta. It's been nourished by the Fraser River, bringing all the nutrients down from creating this Delta. But to farm it, we needed to control the water, very much like they do in Holland, where they dike things off pump the water out, reclaim the farmland, you've got very good farmland, but now you have to have a water management regime to protect it. And it's tied into the ditches, flood, other flood boxes throughout the system, culverts, everything has to be designed to match up to get the water down to this point so this pump station can pump it up. As a result of climate change, Delta's summers are getting warmer and drier, and in turn, the winters are getting wetter. This means the pump station works hard to remove excess rainwater so fields don't flood. The number one criteria for agriculture production in the Fraser Valley is still proper drainage. If we didn't have drainage in the wintertime, all this farmland would be underwater, and even in the spring and fall, it could be underwater and you can't really grow a good crop if your property is underwater. And when the water level on this side is higher than the water level on the ocean side, opens up the flood box and lets the water out and then when the water level on the ocean side is higher than on the inside it shuts the flood box and that's why the pumps have to pump. Like Ted said, this is some of the best agricultural land in Canada as it has a warm summer Mediterranean climate. So it's not just about pumping water out, it's also about pumping water in. So we are here at the 80th Street Pump Station and this is the place where Delta gets its water for irrigation. With fresh water supply coming from the Fraser River, which connects directly to the Pacific Ocean, salinity is a key issue for farmers. The pump station works to discharge water in the winter and as an intake in the summer. There are two pipes and they pump at 2.3 cubic meters per second. Salinity monitors are located right at the source to signal whether the pump should be taking water into the system or not. With climate change and sea level rise, the window for intake is starting to close. So the Delta Farmers Institute has placed sensors along the river to monitor changes of salinity. If salt levels in the soil get too high, the land will be lost to food production. So as such, the results of this sampling are then posted to a website for farmers to use as a tool to make critical decisions on whether the water is suitable for irrigation. All the irrigation water for the whole of Delta's agricultural lands must first pass through a controlled station. That main gateway is located on part of Nancy Chong's land between her blueberry farm and next door's cranberry bog. My name's Nancy Chong and I am a fourth generation resident of Delta. My great grandfather came in the late 1800s. So slowly we've been just building our family farm business. We used to be vegetable and potato farmers. Now we're into blueberries. 
Sometimes we need lots of water and sometimes we need to drain the water. Every farmer is different. Like right now, it's cranberry season. They need lots of water. Delta's Irrigation Enhancement Project is an intricate system of channels and ditches that distributes water to over 3,000 hectares of farmland. This channel, it's got to have enough water to flow to other areas in Delta to support the other farmers. And this is kind of like the starting point of a control gate, shall we say. And since Nancy sees the bulk of Delta's irrigation flow firsthand, she also understands how the system can help with drainage and water supply amidst the effects of climate change. It's, it's more extreme weathers, right? Like we're getting more heat and dry in the summer and more rainy, wet days in the winter time and more in a row like before we'd get like one day of rain or two days of rain but now we could get like four or five days of rain changing weather patterns are a key factor so the supply system is demand controlled and delivers water when irrigation is active anywhere in the system but delivery is stopped when irrigation is stopped or when ample water is supplied by summer storm events preventing the flooding of low-lying areas and saving delta's crops